Queridos amigos, ¿qué tal? Eh, es un placer estar hoy con ustedes y tengo el gusto de presentar al profesor eh, Ferenc Horger, eh, es profesor húngaro. Eh, brevemente, el profesor Horger es eh, filósofo especializado en filosofía política, en historia del pensamiento político y también en estética o filosofía del arte. Ha estudiado en Budapest, en Oxford y en Bruselas, en la Universidad de Lovaina, en Bélgica. Actualmente es director del Instituto de Gobierno y Política, de Investigación de, de Política y Gobierno eh, de la Universidad de, de Servicio Público eh, en Hungría y también es investigador senior del Instituto de Filosofía de la Academia Húngara de Ciencias. Ha sido profesor visitante en las universidades de Jagelona en Cracovia, Polonia, en Babes Boliai, en Cluj-Napoca, en Rumanía. También ha realizado investigaciones en las universidades de Viena en Austria, eh, Gotinga o Göttingen en Alemania, va a cenar en Holanda, Cambridge y Edimburgo en el Reino Unido y la Universidad de Notre Dame en los Estados Unidos. Sus intereses de investigación son el conservadurismo y el liberalismo, la historia del pensamiento político eh, moderno, el pensamiento político húngaro clásico y también eh, historia del arte y, y filosofía del arte en las etapas moderna y contemporánea. Así que es estamos frente a una persona que eh, tiene un gran conocimiento y ahora como siempre, procedo a, a, a pasar a inglés la conversación y para darle la bienvenida a nuestro invitado. Uh, Professor Herger, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here today and uh, thank you for accepting this interview. Thank you very much and uh, welcome everyone. <laughs> okay, well, let's go straight to the matter. What is conservatism? How do you define conservatism? Well, the obvious uh, definition of the term is uh, uh, that uh, you want to conserve certain things. That's, uh, that's uh, the etymological approach. Uh, but I'm not too keen on that. Uh, my own approach is based on the, uh, well, on the ancient and uh, Christian understanding of uh, politics, where uh, uh, what uh, you do uh, in politics uh, is closely related to moral virtues. Uh, political virtues and moral virtues are not independent from each other. And uh, whenever we uh, follow uh, the virtues, and the, especially the practical virtue, uh, and the pra practical virtue of uh, prudence in particular, then we are uh, indeed uh, uh, saving uh, Uh, the values that uh, our ancients, uh, our uh, uh, forefathers have uh, uh, um, given over to the present generation. And in that sense, this is conservatism. Mm -hmm. Why is important or what do you think, it, where, the, where underlies the value of being conservative in, in our current times? Why, what can conservatism give from a political perspective to uh, people and in this current environment where we see progressivism uh, you know trying to cover every aspect of our life well we uh, we live in an age which uh, is proud to call itself modern or even postmodern and modernity was defined uh, as the opposition uh, uh, to the, the traditional uh, uh, arrangement of society, uh, which is uh, 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 therefore uh, uh, something that uh, must be uh, overtaken or, or, or uh, passed over. And therefore, modernity is a progressivist uh, uh, age, an age of progressivism, of, uh, of uh, uh, developing uh, and of, of uh, trying to um, uh, proceed forward. And I think that uh, uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, a very uh, successful story in med medieval uh, 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 Europe, if we speak uh, uh, for the moment about Europe. Then uh, the medieval period uh, was uh, a, a, stagn a, stagn a stagnating uh, uh, period, while uh, modernity brought about a lot of changes in, in the culture, in society, in economy, and in politics. And in that sense, uh, a lot of development uh, happened. So I'm not against modernity. Yet uh, there is a need for uh, counterbalance because uh, 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 you mentioned Aristotle. Aristotle was uh, uh, claiming that, in fact, in uh, human behavior, we always need to keep balance. And uh, 
uh, on the social level, uh, if there is on the one side progressivism, then there is a need for another side to, to have the balance. And that uh, counter uh, current uh, is uh, conservatism, which is to try to keep whatever was valuable uh, in the past, the achievements of the past should be uh, preserved. That's why there is a need in our time for progressivism, uh, mm -hmm. for conservatism in the time okay. of progressivism. Perfect. Now, uh, of course, uh, Aristotle is a central figure a central influence in your in your thinking. Uh, actually, you have uh, written a book, which is called uh, "A Political Philosophy of Conservatism: Prudence, Moderation, and Tradition," which I think was uh, well. It is published recently, and you call upon the need to uh, bring back Aristotle, and you work particularly the concept of prudence, and you study how this concept has been uh, changing, not necessarily meaning, but I don't know how to say it, how prudence as a central tenet of conservatism has in, has uh, been shaped through time until our present days. Why is uh, prudence such an important or central value in conservatism, in your view? Well, as you mentioned, uh, this is an Aristotelian account. Now, Aristotle in his practical philosophy in the Nicomachean ethics and in his book on politics um, uh, is quite... Uh, 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 explicit that uh, in uh, in politics you need to keep uh, certain moral standards and to keep uh, uh, those uh, values uh, that are important uh, for a human society uh, uh, he mentions uh, a, a certain number of key values or key virtues as he calls them and uh, the tradition uh, which follows Aristotle will term those uh, values cardinal uh, virtues mm -hmm. uh, which is taken over by the Romans and from the Romans uh, by, by Christianity itself and uh, those uh, virtues uh, include uh, uh, prudence or practical wisdom, uh, moderation, uh, courage, uh, and justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the left or the progressivist side took justice as the most important one, which is, uh, again, an important notion. I do not want to criticize those who go for justice. In fact, Christianity itself um, uh, always emphasized the notion. So I think that's, that's crucial. Yet, if we want to understand the specificity of uh, political action or political behavior, we need to uh, uh, give uh, an account of um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the imperfection of the world of politics. And in, in an, an imperfect world, you cannot arrive to justice. Uh, it's impossible to be just in the full sense of the term. What you can achieve is practical wisdom which is not uh, wisdom uh, Sophia, but uh, practical wisdom or uh, phronesis uh, in the Aristotelian mm -hmm. terminology, which is uh, the wisdom that is necessary to make uh, the right decisions in particular situations. When you do not have enough knowledge of the situation, you are not uh, yourself a perfect agent, i.e. you have got your own sins and interests uh, in the matter, and uh, you don't have enough time to, to work out all the details. So given these uh, shortcomings, you can be wise only to a moderate level or a, uh, to a, a certain level, and that uh, level of, uh, of, of uh, wisdom is called practical wisdom. And that's why I think that uh, uh, you have to uh, concentrate on, on prudence or practical wisdom if you want to understand real politics. Ideals are very important. Plato or uh, Christian authors uh, always try to uh, work out the ideal world. Yet uh, what we need to uh, uh, concentrate is real world, the, the world of our everyday reality. And in fact, some of the Christian uh, authors uh, and uh, um, more particularly the Jesuits uh, in the early modern concept, uh, con context uh, concentrated already on that virtue because they re realized that in order to achieve a certain things, you have to uh, act in the real world. So you cannot uh, keep uh, the ideals. Uh, you have to transform uh, the, the moral uh, uh, constraints into the uh, context of the particular situation. And you have to apply 
those values in that, those contexts. And this application is only possible through the virtue of prudence. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now, by practical wisdom, I'm, you, you are providing a more prescriptive approach to politics rather than um, not, not so normative, but prescript, prescriptive when you talk about practical wisdom. What do you mean by practical wisdom? Well, uh, it's both uh, uh, descriptive uh, and uh, prescriptive. Uh, in Aristotle's and even in the uh, uh, Thomistic understanding of, uh, of uh, political action, uh, the two realms, the, the realm of uh, norms and the realm of, um, uh, of the given uh, facts, is not uh, 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 you know, separated. They, they talk about uh, the same phenomenon. Nature, uh, our natural uh, 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 character, will always uh, be, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a uh, in a very uh, difficult situation. Everyday uh, reality always uh, challenges us, and uh, what uh, we can do. Uh, who are not saints, who are not perfect uh, beings, is uh, to try to go for the less uh, 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 dangerous solution, for the less uh, sinful solution, not for the perfect solution. That's that's uh, the difference between uh, uh, a purely normative account and an account which takes into uh, uh, account the, the, the actual practical situation that uh, we are part of. And I think in that respect, uh, it's very important not to uh, not to uh, uh, miss uh, this uh, this uh, realistic notion, but yet to avoid the trap of Machiavelli, because mm -hmm. uh, Machiavelli, uh, the first modernist author, um, uh, was also uh, quite uh, influential because he was the first to uh, emphasize this uh, realistic element after the, the Christian med, uh, medieval teaching of uh, scholasticism uh, and, and the other uh, Christian schools. And uh, Machiavelli was right that uh, we cannot be perfect. What, where he went wrong was that, uh, that he thought that if um, uh, the perfect solution is not available, everything is possible or everything is uh, permitted. And that's, of course, uh, not the case. Uh, we, uh, as human beings, should uh, live up to the standards uh, of uh, humanity. And we should not give up uh, those uh, standards in order for efficiency or, or to keep power. And that's the balance that you have to keep. You have to uh, adopt uh, uh, the standards to the, uh, the, the given situation, yet you have to be able uh, to uh, preserve uh, the human uh, uh, dignity. That's that's uh, the notion that is used in the 20th century to describe uh, uh, the, the human being as something more than just the animal uh, uh, spirit or the animal uh, uh, instinct in, in the human being. Mm -hmm. Now, you in, in your book, you made, uh, you listed uh, three constraints related to agency, time, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? What kind of constraints are you talking about? For people who have not read your, your book, how do you approach well, that? Uh, yes, thank you for, for, for asking it, because I, I have now the op opportunity to try to describe what I think is uh, the basic uh, uh, framework of human action. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, uh, the description of the imperfect human being uh, that it has got certain constraints and I uh, concentrate on three of them. One of them is that well we are not perfect beings. We are uh, uh, sinful, uh, fragile beings who will always uh, make mistakes and 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 faults. So in that sense. Uh, when you try to work out your uh, political theory, you have to uh, count with these uh, imperfect beings. So you will never have a, a fully perfect uh, a prince. You will never have, have a prime minister who does not commit sins. That's, that's <laughs> the first uh, 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 parameter. The second one is that uh, no political agent has uh, enough time to uh, exclude all uh, uh, the unwanted uh, uh, consequences. And therefore, uh, all the decisions that we made make as political agents will be uh, uh, you know, imperfect because we cannot consider all the, 
uh, we don't have the the right uh, uh, span of time to uh, process all the all the all the uh, details and therefore uh, again our uh, uh, decisions will be imperfect and and the th a third uh, uh, one is uh, be, be, be beyond the uh, um, the agency problem and uh, and uh, and the temporal uh, problem is that uh, that uh, as a as a human being uh, we are uh, in a position uh, to uh, uh, to make compromises and that's uh, that's uh, something that uh, we have to be aware of that we will not be able to to uh, uh, solve our problems alone, we have to do it together with the others. And that's wh where the community uh, comes into the picture because uh, liberal theory is always concentrating on the human agent as an individual. And uh, the Aristotelian approach is that the human agent cannot be understood without uh, the uh, social context, without the community that he or she is part of. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting because by mentioning these three constraints, um, uh, there's a direct criticism to other ideologies, I would say, in the sense that uh, conservatism assumes uh, imperfection, na the imperfect nature of human beings. And I think that's a fundamental difference with, for example, certain uh, currents of liberalism, spe specifically, for example, economic liberalism that thinks of uh, human beings as the, as the homo economicus, which is always making these rational calculations based on cost-benefit analysis, but it doesn't assume, for example, the time constraint, or it doesn't assume the concept of limited knowledge, limited capacity to make decisions. This, I think, was brought out um, by Herbert Simon, but the concept of bounded rationality, where we have certain elements that we can take into account, but we, do, we cannot process everything. And with regards to communism, I would say there's also a separation because, because uh, the proletarian is seen as a virtuous, almost perfect uh, being, you know, which has been oppressed. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, the proletarians are, are so virtuous and these are idealistic conceptions of human beings. But in conservatism, as you as you well point out, this is not the case. Now, in current times, and perhaps we're jumping up because I want to go to discuss some mm -hmm. aspects of Hungarian conservatism also. Uh, in current times where we see the pressure of scientific and technological development, you know, it's putting so much pressure. Technologies that are disruptive, artificial intelligence, uh, gene editing, uh, nanotechnology, robotics. Um, and this new wave of, of techno optimism uh, under the banner of progressivism, you know, we are not only going to progress technologically, but alongside that technological progress, we will progress morally. Mm -hmm. The first question I would say is it uh, possible? Is it empirically, is it an empirically based claim to say that humans? improve morally over time or are we basically more or less the same creatures that we were in the times of aristotle <laughs> that's a very uh, tricky question because in a certain sense there is uh, human development if you look at uh, science in the time of uh, aristotle and science today you you obviously see um, the development uh, i mean you know we we fly to the moon uh, just to, to put a, a simple example but uh, uh, that's not uh, moral development, of course. Uh, uh, well, in, in that sense, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, moral development is always dependent on us as individual agents. Uh, Christianity uh, tells us, and, uh, and I myself belong to the Catholic tradition, and that's, uh, I think, something that uh, I have to reveal because otherwise my ideas will be um, misinterpreted. Uh, 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 in the Catholic tradition, uh, individual agents have uh, in, uh, private responsibility for their actions. Nobody else can account for them but uh, the, the agent uh, himself or herself. And so in that respect, uh, uh, whatever the human uh, uh, kind as such uh, achieves, uh, I myself have to fight my own uh, 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 fights against my own um, uh, internal demons. And uh, in that respect, there is no development. Everyone has to fight his own or her own fight. On the other hand, there is a, a further aspect, which is uh, political development. And in a way, I agree with those who say that, well, 
democracy as we do it uh, is uh, uh, perhaps not a perfect system, but something that uh, nobody has, uh, uh, you know, uh, discovered any better. I think that's the idea that uh, that Churchill uh, so famously pointed out, and that that still stands. On the other hand. As Aristotle pointed out, um, democracy is not a faultless system. In fact, it tends to corruption, uh, moral corruption particularly. And in that respect, I think uh, democracy needs its, uh, its uh, counterbalances. And Aristotle always pointed out the, the rule of elites. Mm -hmm. Because he th he thought that the majority, uh, which uh, is uh, you know the notion that uh, that is uh, of primary importance for democracy, the majority uh, might go wrong. Uh, there there is no uh, certainty that uh, that a majority decision is always morally correct or politically correct for that matter, and therefore elites, i.e those uh, who have got uh, specialized knowledge and uh, and uh, who have got the right character because he always uh, you know emphasized that that uh, in uh, issues of uh, uh, moral concern it's not uh, simply uh, uh, sciencia or or uh, the knowledge uh, uh, of uh, uh, facts that that mm -hmm. can help but you need uh, to have uh, the right moral character, the rightly conditioned human nature, which will help you to, to make the right decisions. And the elites uh, are, um, you know, uh, uh, those, who be, uh, those who belong to the elite uh, have this uh, specificity, and therefore they have got their role and their responsibility as well in, in uh, uh, society. So there is this need for a mixed constitution. That's how the Ciceronian understanding of Aristotle's uh, criticism of democracy goes, i.e. that you need a system in which the democratic principle is there, but which is uh, balanced uh, by the aristocratic principle. And in fact, um, uh, also in, in the uh, leaders, in leadership, you need uh, to have uh, the, the monarchic principle, the principle of individual leadership, uh, which is also very important in our societies as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very, very interesting, insightful. Um, then again, the, you touch upon the concept of human nature. And um, part of at least one of the things I'm, I'm researching is how technology and technological development is is standing as a current threat of what we understand of being a human today. Uh, all these ideas of you know, playing with genes and in, you know <laughs> shifting and putting ourselves with robotic arms and prosthetics, uh, willingly changing our natural composition for these synthetic or artificial parts. Mm -hmm. uh, the concept of human nature stands at the center. So let's there's a. Um, philosophy of anthropology or anthropological philosophy issue here very very strong now see roger scruton is one of the most prominent conservative thinkers of all time um he has worked uh, that concept and uh, he actually wrote a book on human nature but he also has two other books which are the face of of god and the soul of the world which deal with the more trans transcendental dimension of, of human beings in this science, in this age of science and technology, where human nature is trying to be shifted or changed, what role does transcendence, or that, or, or what, what, what is, uh, how do we approach trans transcendental dimensions of human beings, which it, we are becoming more materialistic? How do we claim back our transcendental, our transcendental nature? Yes, I think you pointed out very nicely the the, the key works of of uh, uh, Roger. Uh, I, I I had the opportunity to meet him and work uh, with him, so I'm very mm -hmm. uh, uh, keen on on the legacy. He died uh, just recently, and I'm working on a book project which will uh, try to reconstruct his ideas uh, concerning the relationship of politics to art, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was. Uh, uh, known as a political uh, theorist, political philosopher, and political critic as well, but he was also a philosopher of art. And I mm -hmm. think that's rather important if we want to understand the conservatism itself. It's not, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a simple ideology of uh, how to preserve power. It's uh, rather more 
uh, based on uh, a, a wider and more complex uh, account of human nature. In fact, at the end of his life, um, uh, Scruton argued that uh, uh, we have to understand the, the complexity of human nature in a transcendental dimension. Now, what is this about? I think that uh, the, the basic point that he uh, uh, emphasizes is uh, cogn cognitive dualism. I, the fact that, well, uh, that goes back to the Cartesian and Kantian distinction between uh, rationality and uh, the bodily uh, uh, aspect of human nature. I, that we are um, uh, thinking uh, beings, uh, uh, you know, uh, homo sapiens, but also uh, animals. Uh, we have got animal instincts and animal uh, necessities. Mm -hmm. And the two things uh, should be uh, taken together. But uh, his cognitive dualism is not uh, this ontologically uh, distinguished uh, dualism, but it's an epistemological uh, dualism. What is uh, understood by that? Well, he think, uh, his example is painting. If you look at, uh, for example, uh, Leonardo's uh, Mona Lisa, what you uh, see there is... Um, materials, uh, uh, the canvas and uh, the paint on, on it. Uh, but why do you look at it? Not because of the canvas and the paint in it, but because uh, you recognize something which is beyond the canvas and the paint. It's uh, in the paint and the canvas, but all or on it, but it's also something beyond it. So that's, that's the duality. Um, we have got a human body, uh, we have got a brain, which is uh, the canvas and the paint. But we also have a personality. And you cannot explain the personality from the body and the brain. And that's uh, uh, the difference. You know, that's why we are interested in each other. Not uh, because of the body and the brain, but because of the personality. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, his uh, uh, criticism of, of pornography, for example. Por in pornography, we are interested in the body and nothing else. Uh, and that's not the human person. And in this uh, um, uh, context, I would uh, also refer to the, the Catholic notion of the person. Because the Catholic notion of the person is, again, a very complex one. Uh, and that uh, claims that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, rational beings, individuals uh, who uh, have got their own ideas. But we are also uh, parts of our communities. And the, the communal aspects also uh, uh, identify us or determine us. And uh, this is explained by uh, uh, Scruton in the, in the phenomenological tradition, by the, the I-U encounter. Mm -hmm. I, e, that in order to have a, a, a conception of myself, I need someone else. Like when we are talking now, you and I, uh, you are interested in my thoughts and I try to explain my ideas in order uh, to let you understand it. So there is an interaction between the two of us. And I will have a better view of myself as a result of this dialogue uh, when I try to explain my ideas to you. And the same is true about you. So in a way, we need each other for ourselves. And that's, that's the Hegelian account of the master-slave relationship, I that uh, uh, we uh, depend on each other. Uh, I depend on the recognition that you will give uh, as a result of my uh, talking to you. And that's, uh, that's something which is crucial in politics. We are not alone in the world. We need uh, the recognition of others and uh, they need the recognition of ours. And, th and this um, mutuality, uh, mutual interdependence creates the community. It's not a, a social contract. Uh, Scruton, following David Hume and, and other critics of the social contract tradition, claimed that uh, th there is no possibility for a free contract. We are born into our family, as Aristotle again pointed out. Uh, and, and our family belongs to a, a larger community, to a village or a district, and that village or district uh, will have got uh, neighbors, uh, and, uh, and then uh, the city uh, comes together. And the city is the political community that tries to live on its own, uh, on autarky, uh, on, uh, uh, on its own laws. 
and mm -hmm. that's uh, where um, you know the whole uh, discussion of nationality and uh, the european the relationship between the european union and the nationality comes in mm -hmm. well that's a straight criticism also to these uh, currents of thought that uh, highlight hyper individualism like libertarianism for example that's which right. are theoretically sound but are practically unfeasible uh, because the human the human being is not an island that's right that's right and in that sense it's uh, an incorrect description of uh, the human uh, condition uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's therefore descriptively not true mm -hmm. now uh, there again comes the idea that uh, from a catholic or christian perspective to include all the currents of, of christianity um, there's the conception of human being as a unity as, a, as an entire as a single unity there's an identity and there's inherent value and dignity in that in that life in that entity um with regards to these modern approaches to to science and technology where they start thinking for example transhumanism where they start thinking of human beings as parts it's a modular approach to humanity where you just can change parts and it's okay you will still be you know the same the same thing but you can call the theseus and uh, you know that theseus uh, kind of uh, um how, how do you say it in english the example of theseus of the boat or you, mm -hmm. you know it goes one way and it comes the same but all the parts are, are just different mm -hmm. um there's also a sense of deconstruction in in, in human in human beings um i'm going to move beyond this because this could open a whole line of discussion but i would like to take a better advantage of the time i have with you and i want to shift a little bit uh, the topic to what is uh, uh given the, the case of hungary R right now hungary is punching way above its weight in terms of soft power, soft political power. Uh, it is a country that has become renowned worldwide because of its stance against the progressive uh, policies of the European Union, alongside with Poland and to a certain, to a lesser extent to other, to other countries. But Hungary, Poland, I would say are the two most prominent ones. Before we go to the political discussion, is there such a thing as Hungarian conservatism? Something that makes conservatism distinctive Hungarian for Hungarians? Is, is there such thing as Hungarian conservatism? Well, uh, uh, yes and no, uh, in the sense uh, that uh, there is a, a conservative tradition of the interwar period, when, uh, when in Hungary, um, um, uh, what was called the Catholic course uh, um, uh, took uh, um, uh, the government, and uh, that is a rather, uh, uh, well, uh, difficult tradition, let's put it this way. In a way, it's comparable to Spain and its uh, tradition with Franco. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, uh, I try to explain it in order to make it understandable for, for an external uh, viewer. I.e. that uh, uh, they were uh, very... Uh, 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 powerful and strong uh, uh, conservative ideas in those periods, but politically uh, uh, that tradition is uh, uh, unacceptable uh, uh, because of the of the uh, inhumanity of the political decisions, like uh, like uh, uh, the, the uh, legislation against the Jewish minority in Hungary, and then the, the Holocaust and and the, the the whole process which led to the Second World War. So in that sense, conservatism has a very difficult uh, uh, and uh, unacceptable political tradition, while there was a strong tradition uh, uh, of uh, conservative uh, thinking uh, uh, fr coming from the uh, period of the dual monarchy with Austria. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, uh, and, and also one can trace back uh, a, a, a long uh, durée uh, uh, perspective and uh, go back, for example, to uh, the, the famous uh, law book of Verböci uh, from the early uh, 16th century, which was a collection of uh, Hungarian customary law, which was not officially uh, recognized uh, or declared as law, but which was uh, taken by the courts and by the uh, legislation as uh, uh, the Hungarian traditional uh, 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 book of, uh, of laws. But we can have an even longer period or, or perspective, uh, uh, which uh, traces back the, the developments uh, to, to the Golden Bull and even to St. Stephen's uh, establishment of the, the country thousand years ago. 
Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I think th these are these are you know the the the, uh, the dimensions of uh, conservative ideology, and one has to understand that uh, until uh, 1946, Hungary had an unwritten constitution and um, uh, 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 um, an understanding of politics uh, which is under the control of this uh, uh, unwritten constitution, and also a tradition of the Holy Crown. Which was uh, which had its traces back uh, into the centuries, but which was developed actually in the 19th century, but which had a very uh, profound uh, 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 impact on uh, the political thinking of of the country. So I think these are the dimensions that uh, I would uh, draw uh, to your attention in in connection with the Hungarian conservatism. Mm -hmm. And now, in the current political time, uh, with um, under Prime Minister uh, Viktor Orban, when he criticizes these what he has labeled as illiberal democracies, and, uh, and what kind of, of virtues, uh, traditions, and costumes is Prime Minister Orban referring to when he says he wants to defend this from uh, the European Union progressive uh, policies? What what is what what is he trying to preserve? In, in terms of conservative, uh, Hungarian conservatism. Well, what you have to understand is that uh, uh, Viktor Orban is a fighter. Uh, I, I, try, I use this term to try to describe um, the, the type of personality because politics is based on the personal character and uh, and his one is that of a fighter. Uh, and that's because he was brought up in the communist regime uh, before 1990. And uh, he, he struggled with that uh, regime because uh, as a young man, he uh, re realized that it's uh, partly uh, uh, anachronistic and partly mm -hmm. unjust. Uh, and therefore, you had to fight for that. And that mentality uh, was quite uh, uh, in tune with the Hungarian tradition because uh, Hungary as a country uh, which uh, was uh, in between two major powers, uh, the Russian Empire and the German Empire, always had to defend itself against the external enemies. So that's that uh, mentality of the fighter is in him. And uh, in the context of uh, uh, the, the uh, new uh, uh, environment, political environment of, of the European Union, he also uh, uh, finds uh, 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 things to criticize and uh, tries to preserve uh, uh, his own stance. Why? Because he thinks that uh, the European uh, Union does not uh, understand fully uh, the demands or the, 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 the political climate of uh, Central and Eastern Europe. There is uh, no uh, actual uh, political intention to try to do so. And, uh, and, and as a result, um, uh, uh, there is no, uh, 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 no uh, acceptance of the fact that uh, these people um, who were uh, uh, under uh, Russian rule for more than uh, 40 years, uh, uh, in certain cases, uh, 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 it means that, uh, that uh, they do want to preserve their sovereignty. And the European Union needs to uh, accept the fact that um, the, the member states uh, uh, need their sovereignty. And uh, when he uh, uh, emphasizes uh, democracy uh, as, uh, the, the, as a notion without uh, adjectives, in fact, he understands by that that uh, you have to be governed by the, the ones that you uh, directly uh, choose for yourself. I uh, by the you know uh, by the uh, uh, population uh, in a nation in a, a country and and that's the national assembly that that should uh, give the rules and not an external power in that sense he is quite uh, uh, critical of uh, of the um, imperial uh, uh, understanding of the European Union. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because all these uh, official officials, you know, president also under also under Leiden, she has never been elected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has well, been that, elected. That, that's what I mean, uh, indeed. Exactly. So there's a lack of legitimacy there and a lack of representation, political representation. They re they represent none none other than themselves. <laughs> also, also you have to realize that uh, as as Scruton points out. Uh, uh, people uh, do not trust, uh, you know, uh, power centers far away. Uh, 
exactly. who want to decide uh, instead of them. So in this sense, uh, locality is, is the key notion. We are living in an age of globalization and, and internationalization, and, and one cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, denied, denied or neglected. Yet again, what we need is balance. So we should not uh, get rid of uh, those uh, elements, but we have to balance the global tendency with a local tendency. As Aristotle pointed out, we need that sort of, uh, of um, um, uh, counterbalance and uh, the local uh, needs to uh, counterbalance this, uh, this uh, regional or continental or global influence in order to have uh, a well-ordered society. Mm -hmm. Well. Professor Jorge, it has been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I, I could easily keep up the discussion, but I don't want to uh, steal your time more than I have done so far. Um, I'm, I'll be soon in, in Hungary uh, in, in November, uh, joining the Matthias Corvinus Collegium for six months. So mm -hmm. it will be my pleasure if you are willing to, of course, <laughs> to have a coffee and, and meet um, up there. I'm very happy to hear that because a lot of uh, our friends uh, from uh, foreign countries come now and see with their own eyes what is happening in Hungary. And I would encourage everyone who is interested in Hungarian affairs to go uh, to Hungary, to come to Hungary and, and check uh, what is happening because uh, you, you, you know, that's, that's the easiest way to, uh, to, to, to uh, get uh, real and, and, and valid information. Yes, and completely different from when the what the biased media portrays of, of such a beautiful and, and brave country. You know, uh, so my my father is Hungarian. That's why I have the that name. <laughs> that, that, that's that's something uh, special. I, I recognized it, uh, but I would defend the journalists. I worked for uh, a journal for ten years, and of course, the journalists most of them try to do their job properly the problem is that the far uh, farther away you are the, the you know the information is the less reliable and mm -hmm. therefore i would encourage uh, journalists as well to come and and uh, and ask as many views as possible in order to have a balanced view once again not just one side but uh, but uh, balance it with uh, with other views and then you have a whole perspective exactly well Professor Jorge, my pleasure, seriously. It has been a, an absolute pleasure to talk to you, uh, to learn more about your thoughts. And uh, I'll certainly, if you are willing, you know, have you in a future edition, perhaps discuss more thoroughly some aspects of your work. And uh, thank you for your time and for your, for your generosity in sharing your knowledge. Thank you. I was honored to to be with you, and uh, thank you for for the listeners to to listen to these ideas. And uh, uh, welcome in Hungary. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.